Hello and welcome to Six Figure Souls, doing good and making money, the weekly podcast to highlight entrepreneurs. This is a very special season five where we are highlighting our co-authors of The Ultimate Guide to Creating Your Soul Aligned Business, 25 Practical Strategies from the Expert. I am your host, Camille Miller, the lead author of the book and pioneer of the soul professional movement. Today, we have one of our authors, uh, Megan Smiley from chapter four, she wrote, and daydreams to design your strategic bridge from employee to entrepreneur. Uh, Megan, thank you for joining us. Oh, thanks so much for having me. This is fun. Yeah, you had a fantastic chapter, like really fantastic. I've, I've read all of them. Um, yours, I felt, was so enlightening and such a great story. So just to tell our um, listeners, you were a corporate attorney. I was, yeah. yes. And I love how you say you, um, you're like an escaped lawyer. <laughs> <laughs> yep. And that, let me mention your own podcast. It's called, what's the it called? Lawyers, Lawyer the Escape? Lawyer's Escape Pod. <laughs> yeah, which I think is awesome. But it's really about your journey, your deep reflection, and your own personal growth to going into your coaching business. And um, I love how you said you now coach people to live by design. Yeah. yeah. And, I, and I just love that because it's so much a part of w- what I preach, right? Of just kind of staying in your lane of joy and really noticing that, you know, this doesn't feel good to me. You know, yeah, so I'm going to yeah. go in this direction. So I love your story. I love that you are were part of this book. And what a huge change when you think of someone who went to law school and went through this whole, um, I, I love in the book you were talking about, like you were taught to think very left brain, very analytical. And now you're kind of going in this other direction. Yeah. Um, <laughs> that was, was totally awakening and enlightening and did you always think of yourself as being so aligned no not at all (laughs) this was truly an awakening for me I I've always thought of myself as pretty just practical grounded I mean for those who don't I'm a Capricorn like just (laughs) you know just I went to law school I you know I knew law wasn't for me on some level yeah. pretty early okay. on. Mm-hmm. Um, so I did have this kind of desire to like what I did, but I would not have put that in any kind of soul alignment terms until three or four years ago, probably. Wow. Um, yeah. And it was really, I had left the practice of law and was working at a law school and that was a big transition, but also not a big transition, if you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. It sort of was a evolution of a, of a career that made sense and seemed linear. And I could sort of say to people, now I work at a law school and people would think that makes sense. (laughs) And it. it was then when I realized it was as good a job as I could imagine. And I still was just, that was when my real deep existential crisis hit. And I was like, if it's not this, I really have no idea what it is that I want to do. And that's the moment when I sort of really shifted and thought the way I've been solving problems up until now is not delivering me the results that I want. And I just, it's like, I'm at the bottom of the barrel. I have to go find another barrel. (laughs) And for me, that was, yeah, tapping into sort of my right brain, tapping into my spiritual side, tapping into, um, you know, thinking about things differently and, and sort of creatively rather than uh, analytically. And so that was really the moment. Did you feel very conflicted as you were going through it? Cause I find for myself, it was conflicting or I hid a piece of myself when I was with certain people and I was yes. like walking around in this facade of a professional. Yeah, for sure. Although I think I think it was like such a low that, you know, so for my husband, it was like, I'm like, Hey, listen, I'm going to be meditating and journaling every morning. Leave me alone. Cause we lived in like a small New York city apartment. Yeah. Yeah. And I think he saw how deeply unhappy I was. And he Mm -hmm. was like, okay, like, I don't get it necessarily, but whatever you need to do to sort of get into a better place, go ahead and do it. So, you know, I think 
I think it was hard. And even now it's been an evolution, like even to be a part of a book called, you know, strategies for a slow line <laughs> business and putting it out to my whole network was like a little bit of a stake in the ground owning it. Um, but one that over the course of a number of years, I felt completely comfortable doing, but certainly it's been a process of kind of owning that part of, of myself. Yeah. It's actually a common thread that I'm hearing now that I'm interviewing all the authors of, you know, and, and even for myself, telling my story, being ready to tell my story and then telling my story and now knowing that it's out there. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And it's different when you share your story to people that you feel really comfortable with and trusted. Yeah. But now it's in a big book and you don't know who's reading it. Yeah. Yeah. But what I've found is it's actually opening doors. Like ever since I put out that I was, I've now connected with a number of other lawyers turned sort of soul aligned business people. And that's been really fun. So it's sort of owning that for myself has helped me connect to more people that are sort of aligned with how I view the world. And that's been really fun. Yeah. I feel like I always say our people, the soul aligned, what yeah. we call soul professionals, they're hiding everywhere. Every time I work with marketing people, they're like, well, what, yeah. what books should they read? What is it? And I was like, you don't understand. They're hiding under every rock. They're in yeah. every profession. They're everywhere. Yeah. They're yeah. just not ready to tell people. But as soon as they feel aligned and say, oh my gosh, my group's over there. Yeah. That's when they're like, wow, I didn't know yeah. all these yeah. other people existed and they think just like me. Exactly. Like, I know we have a chapter on human design, um, which I, which I love. And uh, I now know a lawyer who does human design readings and most of her clients are lawyers. She's like, they're out there and they want this, but it's this kind of growing movement, but they are quiet. Absolutely. Because yeah. you attract who you are. So I feel even writing this book in the last few months, since we've started this whole process, I feel like I've leveled up a notch. Yeah. And I attract different people because I own it now. Yeah. And you can see, so the, the law, anyone listening to this law of attraction totally works, <laughs> <laughs> but you, you so see it when you write your story. And those are the people that you attract. You, I always say you attract who you were two years ago because yeah. now you have the answers. And as you grow, you still attract who you were two years ago. Yeah. So the people that you attract to grow with you. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. So tell me a little bit about um, your experience writing the book and writing your story for the first time. You have your own book out, is that correct? No, is this your first, this was this your first, first writing book. experience? Okay. And let me just say, like writing a book was not on my bucket list whatsoever. Okay. I am one of, a lot of lawyers will tell you they like to write. I am not one of those people. I. It's why I have a podcast rather than a blog. I just prefer right. to talk rather than write. I just don't consider myself a writer at all. Gotcha. But the opportunity sort of fell into my lap and I just thought, you know, it was, it was digestible enough because of the length of, of the story yeah. and the framework that we had and the support that we had that it felt like, okay, like, I feel like I could do this. So um, it was a little surprising to me that I, I decided to, um, but it was, it actually was much easier than I thought to actually write the, the chapter. Good. It, yeah. it just flowed. And and you can see as you as I read your piece, yeah, that it's a it's a it's a story with a lot of passion. You like you felt I felt I went through it with you. Like I felt what you felt. Like it was it was really beautifully done. Oh, thank you. That what that means a lot to me because as someone who does not consider myself a writer, I'm glad it it, it sort of communicated what I was trying to communicate. Yeah. I yeah. I I, I Totally yeah. understand. This was my first writing piece too. And yeah. I do not consider myself a writer at all. Like yeah. you, why I have a podcast. Yeah. You know, not, <laughs> yeah. I, I'm not a writer. I can so, chat yeah. all day, but writing. <laughs> <laughs> so um, tell me your thoughts about the book as a whole. Like yeah. all the different pieces, like you mentioned, we had human design, we have, you know, people that do tapping and strategic coaches, we had doctors, we have lawyers, we like it is such a collaboration. Yeah. And I felt like everyone can find their story in it. What what were some of your reactions as you read other people's stories and chapters? Yeah. I mean, I love all the tools. There's so many, there's such a variety of the strategies that are shared. And I just thought it's such a great compilation of things that I have 
I, you know, I've done tapping, I've done, I've been into human design, but then there are other chapters with tools that I hadn't used. I'm like, oof, I got to do that money mindset tool myself. You know? <laughs> um, but what I, what sort of the overarching thing I, I took away from a lot of people's stories was there was a very common theme of, of I, I was starting, I had this kind of low moment, and then I realized I had to sort of restructure how I think about things, and I opened myself up to new influences and new ways of thinking, and I just, it was, it was striking to me how common that sort of story arc Absolutely. was. Yeah. Absolutely. I, I felt the same way. Yeah. I was like, wow, no matter where we started, we all came through that same journey. Yeah. It was personalized for each of us. Yeah. But I felt like we all had that aha moment. We all yeah. kind of like dug our heels in the sand and went, yeah, I'm doing this anyway. I yeah. know there's risk. I know it feels uncomfortable, but I'm doing it anyway. Yeah. 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 I felt very familiar watch reading other people's stories and being like, Oh yeah. Okay. Well, we're all not alone, you know? <laughs> yeah. What's one piece of advice you'd give to someone who's maybe starting out for the first time or they're stuck in that corporate world, maybe an attorney. Yeah. You know, and they just went through school or they're in their first job and they're like, yeah, this does not feel good. <laughs> you know, I think it's, it's taking the time to slow down and give yourself space to just think and feel because we move so fast in this world and particularly in the corporate world, it's a lot about like, go, 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 do, do, do. And it can be very hard to even, what I, what I see with people is, look, I'd love to go follow my passion, but I have no idea what that would be. And I have no idea how to figure it out. And what people want is some like, you know, 10 step program to figure it out. And that's not how it works nope. and how it works is, is, to do things that feel inefficient and kind of indulgent is how I felt, which is I'm going to take a half hour every morning and just be quiet and journal. There's no real plan of what that's going to lead to, but you have to open that portal to sort of hearing your own thoughts and your own internal wisdom. Um, because if you don't that do that, you're just kind of like in the ringer <laughs> and, and you never get that moment of sort of yeah. into it intuition or understanding actually what you want. I like that. It's yeah. more about the inner work. And I think yeah. the more you yeah. allow it, the better it is. Yeah. Yeah. And it can be hard because, you know, I know from my background and the people I know, you want there to be this linear model for how to solve a problem. And it's being open-minded to this kind of more web thinking, creative, intuitive um, inspiration, which can sound very foreign, but I would just encourage people to be open-minded about it. Beautiful. Beautiful. Well, thank you, Megan, for, you know, being a part of our book oh. and <laughs> for joining us today on the podcast, just to talk a little bit about it. Oh, absolutely. It was my pleasure. It's been a really wonderful experience. Yeah. I just want to remind everyone, if you're looking for the book, that it is available on Amazon. It's called The Ultimate Guide to Creating Your Soul Aligned Business, 25 Practical Strategies from the Experts, Megan being one of our experts. And you can get this book on Amazon. You could uh, Google the whole name. You could Google Soul Professional or anything like that, and you should be able to find it. All right, so thank you for joining us today. For more information about the Soul Professional Movement, you can go to soulprofessional.com. This podcast is sponsored by the Natural Life Business Partnership, a global professional organization and business incubator for the Soul Aligned Entrepreneur. If you live in a higher vibration, have an alternative approach to business, and want to help repair the world, join us at our next meet and greet. You can go to soulprofessional.com to find a date that meets with you and your time schedule. Thanks again, Megan, for your time and everyone else for listening.